Hey, I know I'm looking terrible. I've been working, 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 working hard. Um, but I wanted to come here and get some advice from y'all because y'all know it takes a village to raise a child. And I'm raising five of them on my own. I reached out to the dad about helping. I got no luck. He ignored my messages. It was like, what the hell ever. So he wants nothing to do with the children. Like, if, if he didn't even make them. Like, I was even trying to get him before I even sent the message. Was probably, like, the last two months, I was trying to get him more involved. Like, sending him pictures and sending him things that they was going through, things they was doing. Maybe, like, when I have some concerns, I'll call him on three-way and he could with the kids and then he could talk to them too or I'll call him on the phone we have a family meeting I was trying to get him involved but really he got his own life and don't want nothing to do with them so he's not involved no more so now I got to go to the squad I got to go to the family because I don't have no family and y'all know I always tell y'all everything that went on with me like we, I did a couple lives telling y'all about my family situation where my family was um perverts and they was uh, uh, child molesters and pedophiles or whatever the case may be. Um, I did let y'all know that. But let me tell y'all something. I had a rough childhood. Really rough childhood. I went through so much. I, I cannot say that not one part of my childhood was great. Not one. I, I don't have no good memories of my childhood. Um, I had no one to care for me. No one took care of me. No one was there for me to, that loved me and gave me advice and told me do this or do that. I practically raised myself since I was five years old. But although I didn't have anyone to love me and take care of me, I still in my mind knew right from wrong. I still knew respect. I still knew when you have elders, you respect them. So as far as my father's concerned, my father was not really in my life. I seen him maybe once every year or every two years. And when I seen him, I gave him the utmost respect. I don't even care that he wasn't there. Um, I remember my father used to come and he used to try to kiss me in my mouth and I, and I would tell my mother can you please tell him not to kiss me in my mouth i wouldn't say don't kiss me because you you know you shouldn't kiss me in my mouth or nothing because i felt like i was a child and i stood i stood in the child's place the the most thing i would talk back would be like oh i didn't do that or something like that but it was never out of line as far as my mother, my mother had her own life going on. She chose her boyfriend over us. It was times when my mother wasn't home for months at a time. I remember going back to school um, one time, and this dude was like, he was telling me that his sister had got hurt. And I was like, really? And he was giving me, he was giving me the lowdown about what happened. And he was like, your mother was watching her at the time. And I was like, hold up. How the hell was my mother watching her? You know, my mother was over her boyfriend's house. She said, yeah, your mother babysits my sister all the time. So I'm like, my mother babysitting other people's children while we in the house suffering with no food, no nothing. And when I tell you we had no food, the only thing you would find in the damn refrigerator is maybe some tomatoes and peanut butter. No water, no nothing. Nothing nutritious, nothing. And... My mother was over somebody else's house babysitting their kids. Or she had the kids come over her boyfriend's house and she watched their kids. But we was in the house suffering by ourselves. And we had a great grandmother that lived in the room back in the back. But she didn't like black people. So she didn't even talk to us or want to be around us. So we was practically raising ourselves. And I was taking care of my little brother. My little brother was autistic. He's two years younger than me, so I always was responsible for him. My older brother was always gone on his own, doing his own thing. So, um, even though that was going on, I could have been mad at my mother, you know, for not being there for us, not taking care of us, not doing stuff with us. But, you know, even though I was a little flustered about it, I kept it to myself. I still never disrespect my mother. So, no matter what my mother did or said to me, I never disrespect my mother. 
the thing was when I turned like 25, I still think about it sometimes. I was mad at my mother because I had moved her to my house and she wanted to go back and live with her mother after I paid all this money to fix her room up, buy her big screen TV, buy her bed, all that. She wanted to move back with her mother um, after two days. And so I was like, dang, I put a lot of money into this. So when I took her home, it was raining and I didn't want to walk her to her door. So I, I allowed my ex-husband to walk her to the door her, his Self. and I said I'm not doing it because I was upset with her so I feel like that was disrespectful and that still plays on my conscience sometimes but the thing is um my sister she disrespected my father she threw a plate in his face my brothers talked to him any kind of way. My older brother, he told my father he was going to kill his bitch ass. You know, all types of stuff. Because we came from the gutter. And that's what they do in, in the hood. They talk to their parents like they're friends. I've always raised my children that you you don't talk to your parents like they're friends. Because they're not your friends. No matter how cool a parent is, you still respect them. You honor your mother and father and your days shall be long on the earth. I honor adults, period. I have friends um, because of um, my maturity. I hang around older women. So I have friends that's like 45, 46. I'm not even 40 yet. They older than me. I respect them. So they might do stuff that I don't like. They might say stuff that, that I don't like. Even though you may look at it like those, those your peers because those your friends, they still older than me. So if my friend do something that I don't like or say something that I don't like, I'll say something to her. But when it gets to an argument, I'm not arguing with her. I'm just going to walk away because I respect her. Because I respect my elders. I'm very in tune with that. Like, respect goes a long way. So, I had friends that cussed me out real bad. And they was like, damn, you just sat there and didn't say nothing. Because it's not worth it. It's not worth me disrespecting you. It's not worth me even going back and forth with you. Because you're not going to hear me anyway. I take respect very seriously. So, I teach, my, I teach that to my children. Now, my 23-year-old... When I got this tattoo on my face, he was mad at me. He was like, why the hell you do that? And I was like, hold up. Who are you talking to? Like, remember, I'm your mother. At the end of the day, I'm cool as hell. I'm a cool mother. But at the end of the day, respect is respect. You know? So, I have this 17-year-old that is smelling himself. And then he, girls are starting to like him and on him. And so, now he really feel like he's grown. So... He tells me, I asked him who put the trash out and put it in the recyclable bin because I told them you don't put trash in recyclable bins. I don't know how many times I have to repeat myself. And I said, that's goofy. And he said, you goofy. You goofy and, and, and your whole family pedophiles and, and rapists and you are too because you came from them. I was appalled. I don't know how to take this, but I've never been so disrespected. I ain't never been so disrespected in my life by my own child, the child who needs me. Like he literally needs me because he can't do nothing on his own. He, he has no street smarts. He doesn't know nothing. Like he need me to tell him everything to do. He don't have no job. He don't know how to work his business. He need me to feed him. And he loves to eat. He wants to eat all day, every day. He need me to take him out, feed him. All this stuff he needs me to do for him. And he's fixed his mouth to disrespect me like that. The old me would have cut his fucking lips off and went to jail. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to do better. And it's not easy it's not easy at all these teenagers are out of control out of hand what really messed me up is that i left washington dc because it was the hood it was ghetto kids was talking to their parents like that didn't know how to act i didn't want to raise my children in that environment then i didn't want to raise my children around my family members because my family is messed up and so I left that. I struggled. I sacrificed. I did so much to leave that so I could give them a better life. 
and in turn of me giving you a better life you living in this big ass mansion you living good you living overseas you eating and you you got whatever you want your heart desire i bought him a car when he was 15 you know you got all this stuff and you can fix your mouth to throw that in my face about my family and it's not even that you said so much about my family it's the fact that you included me in it and basically called me a rapist and a pedophile like what that is so crazy to me i never would have freaking thought in my life that my son would have came out his mouth and said something like that to me and i'm like if i was a pedophile and i was a rapist because i came from that I will still be there. Everybody in my family was still there. So they start dying off. But everybody was still there. I left the nest years ago. I moved on my own. I was 15, 16. When I was 16 years old. I'm, when I finally could get out of the house. I left. I never looked back. Never looked back. And all in all, I just tried to provide a good life over and over. Whatever the struggle may have been, whatever I needed to do, I was doing it so I could provide a better life for them. And to even come out his mouth like that, it's like, what? So we deal with so much in life. And we don't have nobody to turn to, nobody to talk to. And these things that it may be minute to you, you know, but it's a big deal to me because even with all the things that I was going through, with all the things I had to watch and watch my back, with my my mom and my grandma would put me in situations to that I could be raped by my family members. I still never said no shit like that to my mom and my grandmother and my uncles or nothing like my uncles don't even know how I feel about them. My cousins don't even know how I feel about them. I may have talked to my children about it. I may have talked to my cousins. I mean, not my cousins, my friends about it. I may not. I may have even talked to y'all about it. But I've never said nothing to my family about it because all of them are older than me. They are all older than me, and I felt like. If I come out my mouth and I say something, sometimes I don't know how to talk to people. If I say something, I may say it the wrong way. So it's some things are just better left unsaid. So I don't say it at all. And I just keep it to myself or I'll tell my my children or I'll tell my friends or somebody like that that's close to me or you guys. But I never fix my mouth to tell my family how I felt about them. They don't know they don't know they know what they did to me or what they did around me but they don't know what I know they don't know how I feel about it none of that but for him to say that that's devastating and I don't even know what to do about it I told him you know what I'm not providing for you anymore I'm throwing my hands up. You need any food. You need transportation. You need money. Whatever you need, don't come to me. It's off. It's over. It's done. Zilch. Nothing. Because you don't have no respect for me. And I can't take care of somebody who don't have respect for me. I, The old me probably would have put him out. The old me probably would have cut his phone off. The old me probably would have been spiteful. But the new and approved me would just say, you know what? Whatever I've done and I've given you, you had it up to now. This is it. I'm not doing it no more. And I go above and beyond for him. Above and beyond for him. But he is just like his dad. Oh, my God. He is just like him. And it's it's a lot of things that I don't like because he has no intestinal fortitude. He doesn't want to do anything for himself to make himself better. You know, it's like he needs somebody to hold his hand. But I'm going to give him tough love, though. But from me to you, it's what's your advice for what I should do about this situation. Because I could be real petty and I could just say, you know what? Let me go here and go. I came back to check on them to make sure that they're okay. 
you know, get a few little things and a few things done. But I'm about to leave. I'm going to be in Africa for eight months. I'm not coming back no time soon. I'm just like, at this point, I'm over it. So, I don't know. What's y'all suggestion of what I should do about this situation? Because this is a bit much for me. All right, talk to y'all again later.